السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حبيب كيف حالكم؟ الحمد لله حياكم الله كيف أموركم في الصحة وعافية؟ ما شاء الله الخلق متعشقين ومنتظرين لما تقولون إن شاء الله. إن شاء الله الله يعم بذلك النفع والقبول وإن شاء الله يجعلنا وإياكم مجتمعين على الخير دائما أبدا بخير وعافية إن شاء الله. I mean, Habib just started off with welcoming everybody and making dua that this lesson is beneficial and not only beneficial, but that it's accepted in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, alladhi jama'ana wa iyaakum ala taqweem al-sayri ila Allah. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us upon this blessed topic of spiritual wayfaring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقايق الإقبال وتصفية القلب بتهيئة تلقي أنوار الله. The realities of speaking proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. حتى نعيش في هذه الحياة على مراد الله وما يحبه الله. So we can live a life in accordance to that which is pleasing to Allah and that which He wants from us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Resulting in us not only attaining felicity in this life, but also in the hereafter. And may the peace and blessings be upon the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to purify and to spiritually rare. And as a result, hearts that were around this blessed soul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, became illuminated. And upon his blessed family, upon the blessed companions, and upon all those who follow this blessed path. To proceed, we'd like to welcome everybody again. With the hope that we will spend during these few hours that we are together. Topics that are related to the realities of understanding Allah and understanding the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what it means to be the bearers of this nur, this light. And before we begin, Habib just would like to thank everybody involved from the Al Mawadda Foundation and anybody else who was behind this initiative taking place. And likewise, those in attendance. وأبلغكم جميعا سلام شيخنا الحبيب عمر. And I would like to convey the greetings of peace, greetings of salam from directly from Habib Omar to all of you in attendance. وقد سمعتم الدعوات المباركات والبهجة والفرحة التي عنده لما سمع إقامة هذه الدورة. And hopefully you've all heard the du'as and the express, his expressing of joy for these, this two-day session taking place. 
وإن شاء الله ولنا أمل في الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يقبل هذه الدعوات ويجعل لهذه الدورة الأثر الكبير And it is our hope that these blessed du'as that Habib Umar made, may Allah preserve him, are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, and likewise, that this session that we are going to have together will have long lasting effects on all of us. <laughs> And to begin then our discussion of spiritual wayfaring. So before we go into the actual topic, allow me then to share with you some of the goals and objectives for having such a, to a session. فمن أعظم الأهداف التي أقيمت إليها من هذه الدورة تقويم السير وتحقيق الوجه إلى الله لنكسب بذلك رضانا. So from amongst the main reasons for having this lesson is that we are able to establish our spiritual wayfaring and, and to gain an understanding of it and through all of that attain his pleasure subhanahu wa ta'ala the subjects of purification rearing are all from among the pillars of the religion in accordance to the hadith which of angel Gabriel, peace be upon him. As for the second objective, is that is that of knowledge. And Knowledge should be followed up with implementation. And a person, if he wants to gain or wants to get a true realization in something, it needs to be preceded by knowledge. ولذا أردنا أن يكون في هذه الدورة معرفة صحيحة عن السلوك ومقوماته وأسسه. Which is why we would like to share in this session the understanding of spiritual wayfaring and that related to it. وكذلك من الأسباب والأهداف كثرة الأسئلة التي وردت من إخواننا and another reason for having such a session is the many questions that have come our way regarding this topic. And among the other reasons of having such a session is the manifestation of people or individuals speaking about spiritual rearing when they're not even from among the people of spiritual rearing. And when people speak who are not from among the the spiritual rare, rearing lots of problems follow thereafter and such as other deviant 
things that have appeared in the days and times that we are living, which are completely opposite to the reality of what we are going to discuss. And we living, we are witnessing times where lots is being spoken about this particular topic without it actually having any base on what the reality of this topic is about, spiritual wayfaring. And which is why we find in amazement many people or some people from the West going into lengths and explanations about the heart and about speak, the, discussing other spiritual matters. Stranger than this, some of these individuals actually take from Islam what they are saying to mix it with what they have. And on top of this, research has actually been established and institutions have been established calling towards these deviant ways. And an example of this is then that we'll find that they will give, pay special attention in their researches to Ibn Arabi and Jalaluddin Rumi to take a peek as to what they discussed in terms of these spiritual realities. Unfortunately, the way they discuss it or present their research or speak about the topic is not in a positive way. Very far and distant is their speech and their descriptions and their findings on what it actually really means to, to, to spiritually wayfare. We, as Sufism or the science of Tasawwuf divides in two parts. So the Tasawwuf is divided in two types and to the closest translation he says type one is more theoretic looking at that the words which the Gnostics mentioned or spoke about pertaining to the science of Tasawwuf theoretic. And then type two is the practical part. Such as that which appears in the books of Imam al-Haddad and Imam Ghazali. Uh, so if these two then are found, then this will bring fruits to the spiritual realities of 
تصوف type 1 theoretic and the practical aspect ولذا عقدنا هذه الدورة لبيان الأمرين معا and for this reason we've arranged this session to explain this topic more فيكون عندنا من الفهم والعلم المبني على تلك الأسس الصحيحة المرتبطة بأسانيدها إلى رسول الله so we can have an understanding and attain knowledge which has a base and a transmission leading back to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَبِمَا أَنَّ الدَّوْرَ تَحْتَ مُسَمَّى مَفَاتِحْ فِي طَرِيقِ السُّلُوكِ And the session or this dawra is under the title The Keys to Mafatih. في طريق السلوك. The Keys to Spiritual Wayfaring. وإن شاء الله تكون بداية لغيرها من الدورات. And hopefully this won't be our last session with all of you. It's just the beginning. إننا سنتكلم في أول شيء عن السلوك. So first we will speak about سلوك, which is translated as wayfaring. السلوك ويسمى كذلك التربية. It also is called Tazkia, which is purification, and Terbia, which is spiritual rearing. And this fall, all falls under the science of Tasawwuf. Linguistically, if you look at the word suluk, it means the, uh, the way of a person. Or his conduct, rather. That's why it said that an example that this individual has a praiseworthy conduct. Or the opposite. وطريقه حسن أو سيء. Which means the way he carries himself is either praiseworthy or blameworthy. وأما السلوك عند أنت عندكم الشرائح جاهزة تعرضوها لما نتكلم عنها تعرض. ليس بالإنجليزية سيدي. آه ليس بالإنجليزي. غير مترجمة ولكن سنكتبون الناس. طيب تترجم وترسل بقى إن شاء الله في الوقت المناسب بإذن الله طيب وأما السلوك الذي هو عند أهل المعرفة والتربية واصل فقال بعض العلماء السلوك هو التحقق بالإيمان As for the technical term or the people, the, the Gnostics or the some of the scholars have said that spiritual wayfaring, which is suluk, is the realization of one's faith. In faith. يقولوا مولانا ابن عجيبة السلوك هو سير المريدين. Ibn عجيبة defined spiritual wayfaring as being the journey that the seeker, the spiritual seeker, embarks upon. As for the definition of a Shahabuddin al Sahrawardi, he says that. It is Suluk spiritual wayfaring is rectifying one's character together with one's deeds and one's knowledge. By occupying one's inward and outward. لشيخنا الحبيب عمر تعريف جميل جامع للسلوك. 
And as for the definition of our teacher, Al Habib Omar, he has a very beautiful definition of what it means to spiritually wayfare. <laughs> أعيد سيدي وهذا التعريف الذي أعيد التعريف التعريف الذي التعريف الذي قال الحيمر هو روح التصوف والتز والتزكية والمعرفة and as for the definition which he's about to inform us about that of Habib Omar this is the very spirit of تصوف ولذا نتأمل إلى ما قاله سيد الحيمر في هذا التعريف. Which is why then we will take a look at that which سيد الحبيب عمر mentioned or defined spiritual wayfaring to be. فقال السلوك هو التخلي عن الصفات المذمومة والتحلي بالصفات المحمودة. And he defined spiritual wayfaring to be the abandonment of blameworthy traits and the adorning oneself once you've abandoned or taken off and dressed these blameworthy traits, adorning oneself with praiseworthy traits. Aywa. <laughs> <تصفيق> لأن فما ذوق إشرع الذي <تصفيق> يغمر القلب وحينئذ يكون في تفاعل باطني So this definition then is abandoning the blameworthy traits adorning oneself with praiseworthy traits and on top of that with in doing going through this process with intense love and realization. Wujdanan, yani mashair wa ahasis. Intense, intense love. Tahakkukan, yani amal wa afal. And through true realities, i.e., implementing them, Implement, implementation. Walihada, mahma kara al insan, fi suluk. وسمع من الدروس والمحاضرات واطلع على ما قاله أهل التربية والمعرفة دون أن يكون عنده هذا الذوق والوجدان والتحقق لا يكون من أهل السلوك. So one can read many books and attend many lessons and if the element of intense love and actually implementing this which one is hearing is void then there is no spiritual wayfaring which is to take place and the author of rashafat which is spiritual and um, poetry habib abdurrahman bil faqih he says in the first line, as for the one who is who is knowledgeable, who, who claims to be knowledgeable in every um, science. Who is, but this individual who's making claims of being knowledgeable in every science, but has not tasted the reality of this which he, he is um, knowledgeable in. Nam. وهو فهو ساهل نائم ساهل يعني غافل نائم So this individual who claims to have knowledge in all these sciences but has not tasted its realities is nothing but as the as the Habib explained in the poetry somebody that's asleep and um, heedless خف عليه ما يخاف الهائم الهائم لذي لا يدري أين يتوجه and such an individual, it is feared from him the same state which an individual who is confused in fears. 
عنده كفاح الموت والأهوال عند نزول الموت when the angel of death knocks at his door his or her door كل ما يتعلق من أعمال القلب وصفات وصفاته كل ما يتعلق من أعمال وصفات الجوارح والقلب as for everything that which pertains to inward and outward actions or deeds هو وسيلة للسلوك ومقصود له this is the means and it is what we call spiritual wayfaring والعلم علمان Knowledge is of two types. علم يقصد للعمل. Knowledge which is sought for implementation. وعلم يثمره العمل. And knowledge which brings about implementation. Is, its fruit is implementation. ولهذا أيهما أفضل؟ العلم الذي يكون معه العمل أو العلم الذي يثمره العمل. So which then do you think is better? Knowledge with implementation, knowledge which is which is parallel with implementation, or knowledge which brings which which its end result is implementation. فإن ال العلم الذي يثمره العمل أن يكون ثمرة من العمل هو أفضل أعيده العلم الذي يثمره العمل هو الأفضل The second type is better that knowledge which which end, which is which its end result is implementation قال الله سبحانه وتعالى واتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that fear Allah and he subhanahu wa ta'ala will teach you. فبين لنا على أن التقوى إذا تمت وتحقق بها الإنسان تثمر علما وهو العلم اللدني. And through this we understand then that once somebody is God-fearing, he has taqwa, it will its fruits the fruits of taqwa is gaining or attaining knowledge from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ولهذا قال الامام مالك رحمه الله العلم علمان and for this reason imam malik rahimahu allah mentioned that knowledge is of two types علم في اللسان knowledge of from the tongue وعلم في الجنان. And knowledge which resides in the heart. وقال ليس ليس العلم بكثرة الرواية. إمام مالك من نعم من علم بكثرة الرواية. هذا ما قال إمام مالك سيدي. ليس العلم بكثرة الرواية. إمام مالك further said that knowledge is not about lot you narrating lots of things. وإنما العلم نور يقذفه الله في القلب. However, knowledge is light which is thrust into your heart from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ولذا يقال علم الباطن. And for this reason, it is said inward knowledge. وعلم الظاهر. And outward knowledge. العلم الظاهر هي هي هذه العلوم من الفقه واللغة يقال لها علم الظاهر. As for an example of outward knowledge, it's such as jurisprudence and the study of language. This is all referred to as outward knowledge. وعلم الباطن هو علم صفات القلوب. As for inward knowledge, this is a close study of the qualities of one's heart and the means of removing the blameworthy traits therein and the means of its purification 
مما يسمى بالتخلي والتحلي. And in short, this is what we call تخلي which is abandoning and تحلي which is adorning. أي التخلي عن الصفات الذميمة. For example, abandoning blameworthy traits and adorning oneself with praiseworthy traits. والتحلي بالصفات الحميدة. نعم. نعم. ويسمى هذا كله هو السلوك. And in a nutshell, all of this is spiritual wayfaring, سلوك. ويقال كذلك علم القلوب. And it's also known as the science of the heart. فيكون عندنا أمران متقابلان. So we find then that we'll have two things which is about to mention, which are very similar. علم الظاهر, علم الباطن. Outward knowledge and inward knowledge. علم القلوب, علم القوالب. Knowledge of the heart or the science of the heart and the science or the outward science. وبينهما علاقة تكاملية تداخلية. However, between these two, there is a relation. They are they are connected somehow, some way. و ومن هنا نعرف مراتب السلوك. And from here, we then get an understanding of the different levels of spiritual wayfaring. We should understand and appreciate that people, as far as spiritual wayfaring is concerned, are not on the same level. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون؟ الله سبحانه وتعالى mentions in the Quran that are those that know the same as those that don't know. وهناك قدر من السلوك يشترك فيه كل مؤمن. However, there is elements of spiritual wayfaring in which Everybody has a share in. And these particular things are incumbent upon this individual. And Imam Ghazali mentions that Spur, uh, at a suluk, Sayyidi. Naam, a suluk al fi haggi kulli mu'min. That spiritual wayfaring is incumbent upon every believer. Wa gala sahib al zubat, the manzumat fi al fiqh al shafi'i. And the author of the zubat, which is poetry. Relating to um, the school of thought of the Shafi Madhab. When it speaks about those aspects of the religion which are incumbent or obligatory upon the believer. Mentions then the obligation of prayer, fasting, zakah, hajj. Then when he reached the point that pertains to the heart, العلم الذي هو داء للقلوب ويفسدها كالكبر والعجب والحسد فهذا من الفرض mentioning then that knowledge about those things which 
kill or destroy the heart is obligatory. And then Habib Ahmed mentioned such as arrogance and so forth. ولهذا نرى العلماء رحمه الله في كتبهم ومصنفاته نرى ماذا سيدي العلماء في جميع المذاهب نراهم لما يؤلف ويصنف يجعلون في بداية كتبهم ما يتعلق بالإيمان ثم ثم التزكية والتربية and this is why we find that it's a common trend amongst our scholars that when they author books after speaking about faith they would go into the topic of spiritual rearing. Such as the book which Habib Ahmed bin Zain authored, Risala al Jamia. And other books. وهكذا نجدهم جميعا يتكلمون عن هذه الثلاثة العلوم لأهميتها وفرضيتها. يمكن تعيد هذه العلوم الثلاثة كي أذكرها؟ بالإيمان وما يتعلق بالفقه وكذلك التزكية والسلوك. Which is why we found that it's a common trend then in um, our scholars that within their books after mentioning the topics of faith and jurisprudence, they would also include in their purification of the heart, tazkiyah. Which is why this falls under the three pillars of the religion islam which pertains to the worship faith which pertains to aida libara al islam alladhi huwa ibara an al ibadat naam wa iman huwa ibara an a'mal al qalb min al iman billah thumma al ihsan alladhi huwa at-tazkiyah was suluk the three pillars of faith, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. And then Habib mentioned that Islam pertaining to outward worship, Iman pertaining to things related to the heart, and then Ihsan, that pertaining to tazkiyah or purification. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, you can tafsir hadhi lahi Sayyidi. اذروا يعني اتركوا وابتعدوا عن ماذا؟ عن ظاهر الاثم، الاثم الظاهر المتعلق بالجوارح كاثم العين، اثم اليد، اثم الرجل، اثم الاذن. حبيب then, حبيب then mentions um, the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that and um, stay away from or leave outward sin as well as inward sin and then mentioned as for outward that pertaining to the sins of the eyes the ears the tongue and so forth as for the inward sin mentioned in this ayah that relating to arrogance envy jealousy and other inward qualities related to the heart. So then this is that which is incumbent upon every believer as far as spiritual wayfaring is concerned. This which we've just mentioned. And even within this, there's different levels. Just like in knowledge, different levels of knowledge. Yeah. 
وكذلك العلم للمبتدئين والعلم للمتوسطين والمنتهيين just like we have in the the schooling systems where you've got a primary level secondary level and tertiary level and so forth ولكن هناك حد ادنى لا بد منه ولا يتسامح فيه However, after mentioning that there's different levels, there is minimums or bare minimums which one should not go, should not be beneath. Which is also understood to be those aspects which are incumbent upon the individual to abstain from as for abstaining it would be abstaining from that which is impermissible and to to do that which is permissible this is the bare minimum regardless of whether this which is permissible or impermissible is related to outward or inward. Speech, actions, qualities. So knowing all of this and and its implementation is obligatory just like the prayer and other aspects of the religion are obligatory. So this then is that is the bare minimum we've just discussed for the general public. But now there's a bare minimum to that which pertains to the one who is the, the spiritual wayfarer, the murid we would call him, or the one, the spiritual seeker, the bare minimum. So his bare minimum is different to the general public or the one that the category which we just mentioned now. Since this individual is not on the same level as the previous. So once then an individual establishes the bare minimum as to what we've previously mentioned for what we would call the general public more things are added to this which are which is attending gatherings of spiritual rearing gatherings of spiritual wayfaring which have a chain of transmission leading back to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam raghibina fi at-tahaqqaq bil iman wa at-taraqqi fi darajat all with the hopes of strengthening our faith and not only strengthening but elevating in the levels of faith fa innakum tukhatibuna bima la yukhatib bihi al-'am and it may be then that that which you hear in these sessions is not the same which the general public will be hearing. And through this, it is hoped that you will gain a true realization of spiritual wayfaring. أد, أداء الواجبات وترك المحرمات 
ظاهرا وباطنا في الاوصاف في الاقوال والافعال والاوصاف يزيد الاشتغال بالنوافل على وجه المحبه. So then one level higher than than this bare minimum which we mentioned which is doing that which implement implementation of that which is obligatory upon you and leaving the impermissible outwardly and inwardly in terms of action speech or qualities is to busy one's busy oneself with superrogatory acts خصوصا النوافل المؤكده في الصلاه والصوم والمال وما يتعلق بذلك more in particular these superrogatory acts within the fast or the prayer and the likes قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وما زال عبدي يتقرأه إلي بالنوافل بعد أداء الفرائض. Which is why it is said in the hadith that a slave continues to gain proximity to me through superrogatory acts after he has done that which is obligatory upon him. يشتغل بالنوافل بعد اداء الفرائض ويحبها ويعشقها ويتعلق بها so it is then befitting or it's necessary upon us to occupy ourselves with superrogatory acts after we've carried out the obligatory acts and this implementation and this carrying out of superrogatory acts should be with Love. And as for abstaining from that which is haram, impermissible, likewise an individual should distance themselves from that which is doubtful. Nam. فحينئذ يكون هذا الحد الأدنى في حق طالب العلم والمريد المقبل على الله كما أن الأول هو الحد الأدنى في حق كل مسلم. So then this defines the difference between the bare minimum for the general public and the bare minimum for the spiritual wayfarer. The general public, as we said, he abstains from that which is haram. However, the bare minimum for the spiritual wayfarer, not only does he abstain from that which is haram, but he also abstains from that which is doubtful. And in addition to this then, which we've mentioned, is doing all of this with excellence. Ihsan. ولهذا قال الشيوخ رحمهم الله إذا رأيت طالب العلم لا يحرص على التكبيرة الأولى فانفض يديك منه أي أنه لا يأتي منه شيء. And regarding this topic of إحسان then Habib Ahmed mentioned that the scholars have said that if you see a student of knowledge or somebody who claims to be of a student of knowledge not concerned with catching the takbiratul ihram, Allahu Akbar, in salah, then um, don't wait any benefit from such an individual. A student came to seek knowledge from Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. قال له ما الذي جاء به قال قال أتيت لأطلب العلم. Imam Ahmed asked him what has brought you and the student answered I have come to seek knowledge. فأدخله بيته وجهز له المكان ليبيت فيه والوضوء ما الوضوء. So he then welcomed him into his home and prepared his resting place together with. Uh, a means of him making ablution. So when Fajr had entered, Imam Ahmed came to this student. And 
and found the water level just as he has left it. And next to the water container, this individual was fast asleep. So when this student awoke, uh, Imam Ahmed addressed him and asked the student, what has happened? The water is still at the same place that I left it. So after asking, after Imam Ahmed asked him this rhetoric question, he then further added and said that, um, gave him basically his marching orders and told him to go home because you are not ready for seeking knowledge. And the, our scholars have said, our teachers have said that the individuals who are lenient or they are not concerned about implementing the, that which is obligatory upon them, their punishment or they will, their punishment from this being, this lack, lax behavior towards obligations is that they won't be able to implement that which is sunnah, supererogatory acts. وذكروا ثلاث مراتب. نحن عكسنا المرتبة الأولى. المرتبة الأولى من تهاون بالآداب عقيب بترك السنن. ومن تهاون بالسنن عقيب بترك الفرائض. ومن يترك الفرائض يخشى عليه سوء الخاتمة. طيب عكسنا عقلي كمان سيدي. من تهاون بترك الآداب عقيب بترك السنن. المرتبة الأولى. So there's three levels here that we must understand that the individual who is not serious about the etiquettes, then his end result will be, or his punishment, if you'd like to call it, will be that he will eventually not actually do the sunnas. <laughs> And the individual who is laxed about implementing the sunnas and he is not too concerned about their implementation will find that he will, he will come to a stage that this attitude will also fall or affect his implementation of that which is obligatory upon him. <laughs> And the most dangerous and the third of this then is the individual who has a laid back attitude towards implementing that which is obligatory upon them. It is feared from this individual to have a bad ending in life. Allah protect us all. So hopefully we've understood then the bare minimum of in terms of spiritual wayfaring for the, the, the general public and also for the second category, which is um, the, the, the serious spiritual wayfarer. وما بعد هذا الحد, الحد الأدنى درجات ومراتب لا نهاية. And don't think that it's only these two categories because what's ahead, um, there's much, much more levels higher for an individual to elevate than these two which we've mentioned. So after us understanding then that what is spiritual wayfaring and the different categories of people with spiritual wayfaring, we will find out after um, the break, بعد الفاصلة.
So after the break, um, Habib Ahmed just needs to um, uh, attend to his Maghrib Salah. And after the break, we'll look at the base of spiritual way wayfaring. Inshallah, nusalli wa na'ud, inshallah, wa nadkur lakum aham al-usus fi hada al-suluk hatta inshallah nantalik bi-idhnillah azza wa jal ila Allah fafirru ila Allah. So hopefully after the salah, then we will come to understand what is the base of spiritual wayfaring. And then with the strong base, we'll then be able to proceed forward, inshallah ta'ala. Kam sayakun al-fasila, Sayyidi? Takhriban. Yani min ashra ila arbu' sa'a kathi akthar shay. Marhaba, nahnu fil intidhar. So the break, inshallah, will just be between, uh, maximum around 15 minutes. So, inshallah, we'll see everybody in about 15 minutes time, inshallah ta'ala. وأحب خلال هذا الفاصل أن تتغنم الوقت بالتذاكر والتناصح والتأمل فيما قلنا هذا بينكم. مرحبا. And Habib, um, it is Habib's hope that during this break, um, we take a closer look at what was already discussed and um, understand it more amongst each other, inshallah. نصلي ونعود إن شاء الله تعالى. حياكم الله سيدي. إن شاء الله um, we'll continue in about 15 minutes إن شاء الله. Uh, as for the questions, uh, Habib has requested that um, we handle, um, people can send questions, but um, they'll only be answered إن شاء الله because of time in a separate session إن شاء الله تعالى. Um, see you all again in 15 minutes, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حبيبي حياكم الله هدنا إن شاء الله والعود أحمد كما يقولون الحمد لله we've returned and hopefully the return will be better إن شاء الله ونحن صلينا بتوقيت مكة المكرمة وفارق فقط ثلاث دقائق تقريبا and we prayed um, according to we prayed Maghrib now in accordance to um, the Mecca time ويقولون أن مكة قلب العالم and it is said that Mecca is the heart of the world وإن شاء الله يقبلنا الله وإياكم and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept us all. بعد أن تكلمنا عن السلوك ومراتب الناس في السلوك نتكلم الآن عن الأسس التي يقوم عليها هذا السلوك. So after speaking about spiritual wayfaring and the different levels of people therein, we will now speak about its base. السلوك يقوم على أمرين مهمين. Spiritual wayfaring is founded upon two important elements. وكل ما يتعلق بالسلوك يتفرع عن هذين الأمرين. Everything which pertains to spiritual wayfaring that you hear about will fall under one of these two things. وهما المحبة والتعظيم. And these two things are love and magnification. والمراد بالمحبة أي تحقق محبة الله سبحانه وتعالى في القلب. And when we say love, we mean that one has a true realization of what it means. To love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فإذا دخلت المحبة في القلب وتمكنت فيه تقطع الالتفاتات إلى غير الله. حتى هذه العبارة يحتاج شرح. إذا تمكنت المحبة في القلب ورسخ أن القلب هذا لا يلتفت إلا إلى الله. So what are the signs then of love residing in the heart? When it becomes firm, it only knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at this juncture, you find that dunya cannot disturb this individual. تجعل القلب مطمئن. And love brings tranquility to the heart. فإن جميع الفضائل تتفرع من المحبة. All the virtues come from, or it's so, the source of all virtues is love. فمن أحب شيئاً the one who is in love with something will have an inclination or desire rather towards this particular thing. And the one who loves something will be scared to lose the op its, its opportunity. And the one who loves something hopes or has a desire to unite with that thing which this individual loves. And for this reason, Imam Al-Ghazali radiallahu anhu said that love is, يمكن تشرح هذه الإبارة غاية الأسوة. يعني الشيء الذي يصل إليه كل المقام هو المحبة. الشيء آه الذي يوصل أو يصل. يصل. 
فكل المقامات توصل إلى المحبة فكل المقامات وسيلة إلى المحبة المحبة هي المنتهى سيدي نعم نعم and Imam Al-Ghazali رضي الله عنه says that everything its ending is love وكل مقام كالتوبة والزهد والصبر والخوف والرجاء هو مقدمات للمحبة and all the different ranks of states such as repentance gratitude and so forth these are nothing but introductions to the end which is love which is why we then said that love is is what we could call a pillar of spiritual wayfaring وكل الأعمال التي ورد الشرع فيها وحث عليها المقصود منها تمكن محبة الله من القلب. All the acts of worship which the our rich tradition has encouraged us towards, this is all with the hopes or these deeds. It hoped that from them it will bring about love. And when love does then reside in one's heart, the state of purification takes place. As the one who has fallen in love with something will do anything for this particular thing in order to anything which would bring about proximity or closeness to that thing which this individual loves. And likewise, this person who's in love will stay away and distance him or herself from anything that the person who they are in love with dislikes. And this is the very essence of spiritual wayfaring. الأساس الثاني من أسس المحبة التعظيم لله. As for the second element, or rather the second pillar of spiritual wayfaring, it is magnifying or uh, magnifying Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب. As it mentions in the Quran that the one who has who magnifies the signs of Allah, this is from the signs of taqwa within this individual's heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi hadhi al-ayah rabata bayna amri. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this particular ayah mentions two things. Bayna zahir wa batin. Combines two things between the two things are inward and outward. The signs of Allah and the heart. Sha'ir yani alamat ayatillah. Naam, a sha'ir yani al kulu shayin yadullu ala Allah wal a'mal. Say, what's the same? Naam, wa yakuluna inna a'adam sha'ir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arba'un au fums. And the scholars have said that the greatest signs of Allah are a handful, four or five things. As-salat. Prayer, number one. Al-Qur'an. The Qur'an. Al-Ka'ba al-Musharrafa. The third, Al-Ka'ba. Al-Hajj. Hajj. Al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the fifth, last but not least, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A'adhamu sha'air alayhi salatu wa sallam. In fact, we mentioned him last, but he's the first and the best sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the greatest. ثم كل شيء يدلك على الله وكل العبادات التي أمر بها الحق هي من الشعائر. So anything then from amongst the acts of worship or anything for that matter which reminds a person about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَا قَالُوا أَنَّ الْجَمَاعَةَ هِيَ مِنْ شَعَائِرَ الدِّينَ And this is why the scholars have said that group prayer is from amongst the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And which is why we find then the relationship between outward and inward in this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the one who magnifies the signs of Allah, this is from among the sign of taqwa being in this individual's heart. And fearing God is nothing less or nothing more or less but spiritual wayfaring purification إذن, all, in, all in all spiritual wayfaring then is based upon two pillars if you'd like to say and number one is love and number two is magnific magnification al mahabba wa ta'zim ومن أحب شيئا وعظمه انتهضت عنده الهمة في إرادته. Any individual who loves something, he will find that within him is an ambition and um, an awakening from within to attain that particular thing that he or she loves. لهذا قال أهل التربية والتزكية إذا صدق في المحبة والتعظيم انتهضت الهمة في إرادة الله سبحانه وتعالى. And the scholars have this is why the scholars have said that if love and magnification is found within an individual, it will spiritually awaken them. To drive towards proximity to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وابتعدت وانتفت الأسباب الالتفات إلى الكائنات والمخلوقات الحاجبة القاطعة عن الله. And in addition to this, what would also take place is that this individual will find him or herself distancing themselves from individuals or things which are a barrier to between him or her and her and his or her lord which is why it's very important then that within the heart these two qualities are found number one Love number two, magnification. And by us having said this, then we have reached the end, which regarding our discussion of suluk, spiritual wayfaring. And now we will speak about another important topic, which is a tariqa or turuk, um, spiritual paths. As for the individual, the, the, the one who wants to gain or to spiritually gain proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is the means then for this individual? 
وهنا ظهر مفهوم الطريقة أو الطرق. And through this question then of to as to what are the mean what is the means of proximity this subject of spiritual path came about. ولا شك ولا شك عندكم أنكم أنتم تسمعون عن هذا فيقال الطريقة القادرية الطريقة الشاذلية طريقة البني علوي فما هذا الطريقة وكيف نشأت و and without a shadow of doubt, I'm sure most of you have heard of a tariqa al baalawiya and a tariqa shadiliya and so forth. So the question is, what are the base of all these um, spiritual paths or spiritual ways? Uh, الله سبحانه وتعالى بعث نبيه المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن مقاصد هذه البعثة التزكية. الله سبحانه وتعالى when he sent the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to the world from among his tasks was تزكية which is purification. كما جاء في الآيات ليزكيهم. as it's been mentioned in the verses in order to purify them. Which is why we found that the companions would, in the presence of the Prophet وسلم, be, they would be going under purification. ويتلقون الأنوار بمجالسته صلى الله عليه وسلم. And through sitting in his blessed company صلى الله عليه وسلم, the companions would receive نور, light from him. ولهذا لا يحتاجون إلى شيء يعني كيان معين حتى يرتبط به لوجوده هو صلى الله عليه وسلم بينه. And which is why then that the companions didn't really need a, a systematic um, or they didn't need um, the means or the different methodologies as he وسلم, was the source of all of these means and all of methodologies and he وسلم, was right in front of their very eyes. فيرونه عليه الصلاة والسلام في أقواله وأفعاله وأحواله. Witnessing his speech, his actions, his states, صلى الله عليه وسلم. ولهذا صفت قلوبهم. And purification of their hearts took place as a result. به صلى الله عليه وسلم. Because of him, صلى الله عليه وسلم. ثم لما انتقل إلى الرفيق الأعلى عليه الصلاة والسلام جاءها التابعون وتلقوا هذه الأنوار وهذه الأسرار وهذه التربية من حضرة الصحابة الكرام. So after his blessed demise of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, thereafter the tabi'un, the followers came and they then likewise took from the companions of the Prophet وسلم, this important science. However, that which, that which took place in terms of purification between the companions and the followers was not like, cannot be compared to that purification process which took place between the companions and the purified one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَهَكَذَا كُلَّمَا بَعُدَ الزَّمَانُ عَنْ زَمَنِهِ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةِ وَالسَّلَامِ تَكْثُرْ الْرُعُونَاتِ وَالْإِلْتِفَاتَاتِ فَهُنَا أُحْتِيجَ إِلَى تَنْظِيمُ وَتَرْتِيبُ فِي سَيْرِ الْمُرِيدِينَ إِلَى اللَّهِ كَمِثْلِ بُهُورِ الْمَذَاهِبِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ which is why then we find that as time passes and the space between the Prophet 
and those uh, and us increases more and more obstacles spiritual obstacles appear and which is why things have to be in a more now organized fashion if you'd like to say why we now have um for example um the the four the school of thoughts the madhabs so having said this then forget that you heard that statement which i just said and would you say then that because we've got school of thoughts in today's time the the different fiqh school of thoughts do can we is it correct to say that there was no fiqh or jurisprudence in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam الفقه كان موجود فيه عليه الصلاة والسلام لأنه هو المشرع لتلك الأحكام فما احتاجوا أن يجمعوا كتبا ولا أن يؤلفوا مذاهب Well, maybe there was not as many books as they were as in today's time However, let's appreciate and understand that there was no need for books and for different um, articles regarding fiqh because the companions had the source of fiqh in front of them, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. ثم بعد ذلك لما انتشر الإسلام وكثرة المسائل والجهل وحصل هناك ورود كثير من المشكلات ظهرت المذاهب الأربعة في التدوين والكتابة وجعل الضوابط والقواعد لكي تسوق الناس إلى العبادة الصحيحة as then Islam expanded in different parts of the world and um, ignorance slipped in to um, some of the communities, we then had a need to introduce, or the, there was a need within the Ummah to introduce these school of thoughts, these um, different fixed school of thoughts and uh, books to be authored and so forth, all with the hope of preserving this rich tradition. So if this is the case with jurisprudence, likewise with that which is related to Ihsan. So, as the distance then increased between us and him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the topic of ihsan then also needed to be more um, systematic and me um, methodologies needed to be introduced with the hope of preserving this important element of the deen. وظهر هؤلاء الأئمة العارفون لكي يأخذوا بالمرتبطين بهم والمنتمين إليهم إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى بأسس وقواعد مستمدة من الكتاب والسنة يكتفون بها عن القواطع والالتفات يكتفون عن القواطع والالتفات ماذا تقصدون؟ غير الله عز وجل يكون من هاي صحيح في الإقبال على الله and then we, this is why then we found that as there was a need for a, a more systematic or a, um, things, to, a methodology to be introduced, we found men and women behind the methodology, which would then, who would then be responsible of taking the hearts of the individuals and guiding them towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why then we find this terminology which is called tariqa. Just like we have the terminologies of the school of thought of Imam Abu Hanifa, the school of thought of Imam Shafi, and so forth. أو مالك أو شافعي فإنه يعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى على وفق قواعد هذا المذهب. 
So understand with certainty that any individual follow, who is upon any of these school of thoughts, certainly through this um, method attains or is able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it's, it's impossible for somebody who is not from among the scholars to, to understand the, the rulings of the religion by relying on his intellect, by extracting from the Quran and from the, the prophetic narrations. كيف سيعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى عبادة صحيحة كما يريدها الله سبحانه وتعالى؟ How then will this individual be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the lack of his intelligence of extracting from these sources? How will he be able to worship him in a way that he subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to be worshipped? لا بد له حينئذ أن يقلد عالما من العلماء المعتبرين. It's very really simple. The solution to this is that this individual not, should not rely on his intellect, should rather follow one of the schools of thought. وكذلك المريد والسائر المقبل إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى. This is for fiqh, but the same applies for spiritual wayfaring and the one that wants to set, embark upon this path towards proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this individual who then wants to implement or to get, um, to, to bring about a realization in his life with this third pillar, which is this third pillar of the religion, which is Ihsan. Strives to rid himself of blameworthy traits and exerts him or herself to adorn themselves with praiseworthy traits. Which can only be achieved then through connecting oneself to these spiritual ways and the people of these spiritual ways, these tariqas. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him and if you don't see him, then know that he sees you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the hadith states. So, all this then that we are discussing is, falls under tariqa, spiritual way. المنهج الروحي والطريق السلوكي الذي يتوصل به إلى معرفة الله عز وجل والترقي من مقام إلى مقام أعيد الإبارة سيدي الطرق الصوفية المنهج الروحي والطريق السلوكي الذي يتوصل به إلى معرفة الله والترقي من مقام إلى مقام so the spiritual way then is a methodology that's in place for one to attain to to attain knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increase in spiritual ranks. So then, everything which we've discussed in terms of, everything falls under spiritual wayfaring, or the, the, the spiritual way rather, 
and he mentioned a few things. You can to aid Sadi. التصوف الذي نسمعه والتزكية وهذه التربية ومن التحلي والتخلية هو المنهج هذا كله هو يكون في الطريقة. So then this this which we've discussed some of the things that we've discussed today in terms of adorning oneself with praiseworthy qualities and ridding oneself of um, blameworthy qualities and and um, some of the elements of tasawwuf which we've spoken about this all falls under what we would say tariqa the spiritual way وهذه الطريقة هي التي تختص بالسالكين المقبلين على الله لكي يترقوا في الدرجات والمراتب. And this spiritual way then, um, this طريقة is that which is the concern of the spiritual wayfarer in order for them to spiritually progress and to spiritually elevate upon this path towards proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فيقال طريقة البني علوي طريقة القادرية الطريقة الشاذلية وغير ذلك هو ذلك المنهج التربوي السلوكي الذي من دخل إليه يلتزم به في الإقبال على الله سبحانه وتعالى فينال الدرجات. So the spiritual ways are of different kinds and we've heard of the spur the the, the tariqa ba'alawiya the qadiriya the shadiliya and so forth and all of these are a means to one attain to attain proximity towards allah to subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the process spiritual elevation <laughs> قال سيدي العارف بالله الإمام الدردير. قال and for, and for this reason one of the Gnostics mentioned. وطريق القوم هي رياضة النفس. As for the spiritual path of the folk or the people, it is to spiritually train or, or a spiritual exercise of the heart. بمخالفة النفس. Through going against one's caprice. أي مخالفة شهواتها. I.e. going against that which um, it lowly desires. وملازمة التقوى. And to be always in a state of God, of fearing God. وذكر مخصوص. And to have a specific ذكر يعني أذكار نعم and to have a particular a, a, a particular litany على يد شيخ عارف which you receive from a sheikh who's a Gnostic هذه هي مفاهيم الطريق so this in a nutshell is an understanding of طريقة spiritual way وجميع الطرق هذه تنتمي إلى سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب كرم الله وجهه. And all these tariqas, all these spiritual ways, their source, or not rather their source, but they go back to سيدنا علي بن أبي سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب كرم الله وجهه. وهناك من الطرق من تلتسب إلى سيدنا أبي بكر ومنها إلى سيدنا عمر ولكن الغالب إلى سيدنا علي. Although there is some spiritual ways which go back to سيدنا أبو بكر and سيدنا عمر رضي الله عنهما, however majority of the spiritual ways go back to سيدنا علي. وذلك لأن سيدنا الحسن البصري أخذ عن سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب هذا التربية والتزكية بما يسمى بلبس الخرقة. And for this reason, oh, and this is because Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri took from Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib 
through the methodology which is known as you can tashrah had the khalq al al khirqa hi ibara an al ittisal al ruhi bi ha bil shaykh fayatihi shay dalil ala hadha al ittisal faqad thabata ana sayyidna al hasan al basri akhadha an sayyidna ali ibn abi talib wa li hadha al turub tantami aghlabaha ila sayyidna ali an tariq al hasan al basri and it has been narrated that and um, established rather that Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri took from Sayyidina Ali and through a methodology which um, Habib Ahmed said that um, Aisha Aisha Tariqa بأي مذهب أخذ سيدنا حسن من سيدنا علي؟ أخذ التربية والتزكية سيدنا الحسن البصري والعلم عن سيدنا علي. Rather, um, um, it's it's been narrated more that سيدنا حسن took from سيدنا علي, and although there are also um, reports of um, سيدنا أباك and سيدنا عمر, but the majority of um, that which has been reported about spiritual um wayfaring it's between these two individuals which is why it is said that the spiritual wayfaring goes back to sayyidna ali wa hunaka alladhina yunkiruna ala hadhihi al-quruq yunfuna sihhat tisbat al-hasan al-basri la sayyidna ali aid hadhi al-ibara fi al-akhir yunfuna sihhat al-nisba hunaka alladhina yunkiruna ala al-quruq يشككون في نسبة أخذ سيدنا الحسن البصري عن سيدنا علي. Unfortunately, there are some individuals which throw doubts to this topic and bring about throw doubts towards the connection between سيدنا حسن البصري as we know it is and سيدنا علي in terms of this spiritual wayfaring. ولكن ذكر كثير من المحدثين صحة نسبة سيدنا الحسن البصري عن سيدنا علي وأخذه وتلقيه عنه. However, many great hadith scholars have mentioned and have confirmed this relationship and this connection between سيدنا حسن البصري and سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب. الحافظ بن حجر العسقلاني والإمام السيوف. And he's mentioning some of the names. In fact, some of these great scholars, Ibn Hajar and so forth, Imam Suyuti has actually written something regarding this topic. And in fact, many scholars have written have documented and confirmed within their writings the connection which was which took place between Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri and Sayyidina Ali. لسنا الآن بصدد إثبات ذلك وإنما ذكرناه لأن بعضا يشكك في هذا لكي يجعل الطرق غير صحيحة. It's not today's topic, but I just thought I would mention that as a side note. Because there is people out there that throw doubts into this topic and more so this connection or attachment or this which took place between Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri and Sayyidina Ali. And through this then we will understand where, what are the roots of these spiritual ways. و ثم بعد ذلك هناك اصول للطرق التي تتفرع منها جميع الطرق. اعيد هذا سيدي. يوجد هناك اصول للطرق ثم تفرعت منها بعض الطرق. فمثل أن تقول دار المصطفى هذا الأصل ثم فرع المؤسسة المودة ثم المقاصد 
ثم جماعة الروح ثم غير ذلك من الفروع لكن ثم بعد ذلك هي في الأصل ترجع أيه. إلى شيء واحد أصاي حقق الأصول يا رب So Habib has mentioned that um, there is then what how we would translate it to be um, the main spiritual way, the main tariqas. And then from these main tariqas, we find other, what you would say, branches. The scholars have mentioned that the the main then spiritual ways are five. What is meant then that these are the main spiritual ways is that all the other spiritual ways, um, tariqas that we find, they go back to one of these that we are these main ones that we are about to mention and these individuals are the ones then who had an input in terms of the methodology that should be used for the spiritual um seeker up along his path towards proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find, we find then that as time progresses, it may be that things um, change or new branches are, are introduced however the 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 roots remain the same and as we said the roots remain the same so if these branches do take place it must ensure we must make sure that the the root is still the same and it's still based on the the, the main principles of the main tariqas such as the different school of thoughts that we have and it may be that a legal ruling or a fatwa rather um, might be different from one school of thought to the other in terms of context and so forth. So with these then, when we discuss the branches and so forth, things being different, they then should all be, or they should all have its roots back to then Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri, who took from Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu Wajhu, who then took obviously from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the source of all knowledge. So we then find then that in terms of um, the beginning or this beginning of the, this chain, it was from Sayyidina Ali Karamallah who then gave it to Sayyidina Hassan al-Basri. Which is why then that all chains of um, all, all spiritual ways, rather, should and do and should have their roots going back to these pure sources that we've mentioned. So these five. Uh, so, as, 
as for these five um, roots, then, or um, the, the the beginning points, they are five. The main the main tariqas. Al-Ula, la Sayyidna wa Mawlana Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jailani. So the first tariqa then is for, and um, in no particular order for, um, Sheikh Abdul Qadir al-Jailani. Al-Thani, Sheikh Abu Madian Shu'ayb al-Maghribi. And the second then is for a Sheikh Abu Madian al-Maghribi. Uh, Al-Imam Umar al-Sahrawardi. And the third is for Imam Umar al-Sahrawardi. Wa Sayyidi Mawlai Ahmad al-Rifai. And then um, Sayyidina Ahmed al-Rifai. Wa Sayyidina al-Shaykh Abu Ishaq ibn Shahrayar. And then this fifth individual who he's mentioned his name. Awla كما ذكر بعضهم أنها الأصول التي تفرعت منها كثير من الطرق. So like we said then, the, the scholars have mentioned that all the spiritual ways that we find should or go back, having their roots to these five individuals which we've mentioned. حتى طريقة سيدنا uh, as for our spiritual way, the Ba'alawi way, it has two points which it goes back to. Okay, Valik Sayyidi. يعني إسناد سيدنا الطريقة من سيدنا فقيه المقدم عن آبائه وأجداده إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. A chain or um, a source going back from from son to father right to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. والإسناد الثاني إلى سيدنا أبو مديان رحمه الله. And a second um, chain leading or going back to Abu Madian, Rahimahullah. Wa Hada Al Khamis Ali Huwa Snad Al Muhakatin, a Sheikh Abu Shah Ibn Shah Rabar, Bilba Shah Rabar. Hada Isam Sab, I mean, Hada Tariqa Tariqa Al Arab. يعني لا يعني ربما نطقه بالانجليزي صعب ولكن يكون عندهم تصور انه ولو بمسمى الشيخ ابو اسحاق الشيخ ابو اسحاق الكازروني التاريخ الخامس الذي ذكرته التي ترجع عليها الفروع كما ذكرنا فقط من باب ان يكون لديهم علم ومعرفه بذلك تمام واصل نعم ولعلنا إن شاء الله نعقد مجلسا نبين فيه طريقة آل أبي علوي وأصولها وأسسها ولماذا سميت بهذا الاسم ومن هي رجالها وما هي أسانيدها. أحسنتم. And hopefully we will um, um, be able to arrange a lesson in the near future to discuss more in detail about the Ba'alawi way and who were the great people behind it and um, its methodology. فإذا أخذنا الآن تصور عام عن ما هي الطرق واحتياج الإنسان إلى الطريقة وأصول الطرق وسندها. We hope then today that we've taken a general or summarized understanding as to the importance of spiritual wayfaring and what does it what does tariqa mean spiritual path or spiritual way actually mean or intends wali kull tariqa uslub fi tarbiyat al muridin wal muntamin ilayha mustamiddan min al kitab wa sunnah and although the tariqas are uh, or the, the dif different tariqas have different methodologies in terms of what their 
spiritual wayfarers should do. But we find that although they are different names, they, their source is the same in terms of um, the methodology uh, from, from where, they, where they extract from, and that's from the Quran and the Sunnah. So it may be then that in terms of its implementation, one tariqa might differ. For, for one tariqa might diff, differ from another tariqa. However, all of them are on the same base. Just like the school of thoughts, which has different methodologies from one madhab to one school of thought to another, in terms of deriving or extracting legal rulings. <laughs> in general, then, um, he mentioned poetry from um, Abdurrahman Bil Faqi. And just to give a summarized meaning um, as to what he said, that things in terms of the, the branches, might be different, but the roots are the same. Wasil Sayyidi. وَذَكَرَ مَوْلَايَ الدَّرْدِيرِ فِي كُتُوبِهِ أَنَّ الْأُصُولِ لِأَبْطُرُقِ 12 أَصِلِ And another scholar mentioned that the, or the, the, the spiritual way, a tariqa, usul a tariqa, in terms of um, the spiritual way, um, one scholar mentioned that it is founded upon 12 things. Number one, hunger. Number two, staying up um, or... يمكن يمكن أم تشرح السحر. يعني قيام الليل. قيام الليل. Night prayer number two. الصمت. Number three silence. العزلة. Uh, silence i.e. speaking little. Number four um, isolating oneself. دوام الذكر. Being in a constant state of the remembrance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. شيء. The big city? A sheikh. And number six, having a, a teacher, a sheikh. A tawbah. Number seven, repentance. A shukur. Number eight, gratitude. A sabr. Number nine, patience. A rida. Number ten, you can touch a rida. A rida an illahi subhanahu dhifu billahi rabban. Or bil islam idina. Um, Number 10, being content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mulazamatu tahara. Kayfa tahara? Zahir or bajra? Wudu. Al wudu silah al mu'min. Being in a constant state of um, spiritual purity, having wudu. Al sidq. And the 12th, sincerity. ثم بعد ذلك قد تتقدم البعض أو تتأخر البعض أو تقل البعض كل ذلك يعود إلى الطرق وكيفية الأساليب لا غير. So it may be that um, some individuals, um, some of these 12 things that, that are mentioned are probably not in some of these orders in the other tariqas. However, it all, it's, it all goes towards attaining the same goal. 
وبهذا كل من ارتبط بطريقة من الطرق فهو سائر إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى على أصولها وأسسها وقواعدها وضوابطها. And for this reason, then anybody that seeks to embark upon the spiritual journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should make this which we've discussed their base. And through this which we've discussed, overcoming spiritual barriers and ridding oneself of blameworthy qualities and adorning oneself of with praiseworthy qualities. And then this individual can now say that they have a connection and there's an attachment between them and this particular tariqah, the spiritual way. يجب على كل من ارتبط بالطريقة عبر شيخ أن يأخذ بهذه الطريقة ويقبل على الله سبحانه وتعالى بتوجيهاتها وأصولها وأسسها. So it's a befitting then upon anybody who claims or anybody who wants to embark upon spiritual wayfaring through a particular sheikh that this spiritual wayfaring be based upon these principles or these matters which we've discussed. In the man, Sayyidi. And that his understanding is correct as to what it means to spiritually wayfare. من انتمى إلى مذهب من المذاهب يعبد الله سبحانه وتعالى بذلك المذهب. For example, an individual who is um, associated to a particular school of thought would worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى based on their understanding of their of their school of thought which they are upon. وعلاقة هذه الطرق بعضها ببعض كعلاقة المذاهب بعضها ببعض. So the connection that we find between the different spiritual paths or tariqas that we've mentioned today is such as the connection which exists between the different school of thoughts or the different madhabs. Which is why it's incorrect for us to say that the Shafi Madhab is more or is correct and the and, and a, another particular Madhab is incorrect. And through this we find the manifestation of mercy within the religion of Islam. And further than this, when scholars differ, this is nothing but a sign of mercy. And it's also then a form of mercy for there to be different spiritual paths or ways or tariqas for the one who wants to spiritually embark upon the, upon the path of proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So having said this then is that every, that all of this is connected we find that there should also be mutual love amongst the different people of different um, spiritual paths, different tariqas. And we find then that an example of this mutual love that should be taking place is that 
individuals of a particular tariqa may take as a, as by as a means of blessing a particular element of another tariqa but taking from another tariqa as means of blessings not neglecting his own tariqa which he is upon just so this individual cannot be um, fall into a state of confusion in terms of his direction towards Allah subhanahu towards proximity towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example is it possible then for an individual in one given moment to implement all four schools of thoughts in their prayer and an example of this is an individual who then, out of his ignorance, mixes up that in the first rakah, the prayer of um, in, uh, the Shafi Madhab, second rakah, Hanafi Madhab, third rakah, Hanbali, and so forth and so forth. Such an individual, his prayer upon consensus of the scholars is invalid. Likewise then, just like this example that we gave in Salah, likewise for spiritual wayfaring, that you cannot implement on one moment or one go the your your particular tariqa which you are associated to as well as the others because what this will lead to is your spiritual wayfaring being affected in such a way that it might even be invalid such as they in the prayer هل ممكن أن يذهب إلى جميع الأطباء ليعالجوا أم يذهب إلى طبيب معين يستشيره؟ And another example then is it possible then for an individual who is sick to approach all doctors and then implement everything that all these doctors say with the hope of getting cure? This individual obviously needs to stick to one doctor. Nam Sadi, Afon. Aida Libara, Halia Jews? Halyumkin Lil Murid was Salik and Yetanakal Mimfariga Ila Fariga. So the question then is, is it possible then for, um, or is it permissible or um, recommended for an uh, individual to be moving from one spiritual, from one spiritual path, from one tariqa to another? As we've mentioned that all the spiritual paths are correct. Just like all the four school of thoughts are correct. Uh, Right. So this example then that we said, this question that Habib Ahmed asked, 
can one person jump from one tariqa to another? He said, rather, this individual should stick on one tariqa. Just like that example that we gave of the patient or an individual who's sick, who will not jump from one doctor to another. He will stick with one doctor and suffice with that doctor's prescription. And now we want to mention something very important that I want all of you to focus on. And it's that it's an individual who moves from one tariqa or one spiritual way to another because of his or her lowly desires, his caprice. So such an individual needs to somebody to guide them and needs somebody to take them by the hand. And this can only take place then if this individual has a sheikh who he or she can go back to and seek and, and consult him in his or her affairs. And anybody that finds themselves in this situation should also increase in, in praying the istikhara, praying salat al-istikhara, until a sign or something manifests to this individual as to which direction they should go. And this individual then, after taking these means which we just mentioned now, should be sincere in turning towards Allah and requesting from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to provide for this individual who is in the state of confusion, to provide him with somebody who will then guide them, a sheikh. And increases in supplicating towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَأَى أَنَّفْعَ وَالْفَائِدَ وَأَنَّهُ تَغَيَّرَ قَلْبُهُ فَلْيَلْسَمْ هذه طريقة يعني طريقة ما طريقة ما And an individual then, if he finds that his or her heart is inclined towards a particular طريقة نعم إذا وجد قلبه ما إذا وجد قلبه قلبه يميل إلى طريقة ما وانشرح صدره ووجد الأثر في تغير أفعاله وأحواله فليلزم. So an individual then that finds his heart inclined towards a particular um, طريقة or particular spiritual path should then be should then attach themselves to this way and follow strictly this which is um, taught from this tariqa, especially when they find within themselves some form of spiritual benefit from having followed or inclining towards this tariqa. Well, in, inclining towards a particular tariqa. Well, and if this individual is sincere in turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then without a shadow of doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send such an individual, a person who would then take them by the hand and show them the way. وَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَتْ لَهُ رَابِطَ بِشَيْخِ 
as for the individual who already has a connection with a particular sheikh and is attached and um, associated to this sheikh uh, as well as connected to the sheikh this individual then after seeing uh, the fact that this individual is connected and attached and associated to a particular sheikh should then stay put and um, hold on to this particular sheikh and with the hopes of what follows only to be um, benefit and without harm coming the way of this individual. المحور لهذه الليلة لأن الوقت قد دخل الساعة السابعة ونصف لأننا قد أخبرنا الشيخ عبد الله أنه من إلى الساعة السابعة إلى السابعة ونصف وقد كان آخر حديثنا هو التعلق بهذا الشيخ وليلزم ويتصل به ويسلم له أمره وينتمي إليه ولا يضره بنا بعد ذلك شيء. So on this note then we end our discussion. And ending it on this note of, and I'll repeat it again for emphasis, Habib Ahmed mentioned that um, an individual who finds themselves applying to a particular sheikh, connected to a particular sheikh, should hold fast to this particular sheikh. And it is hoped that through this holding fast, no harm will come to this individual, no spiritual, no harm will come to this individual. And they will um, benefit from this particular sheikh. وهذا سيكون إن شاء الله حديثنا في المحور الثالي وهو ركن مهم من أركان الطريقة والسير إلى الله وهو الشيخ. And this is then the end of today's discussion and will be the beginning point of tomorrow's discussion, the topic of the sheikh. سنتحدث عن مفهوم الشيخ. ومعنى الشيخ والمراد من الشيخ. What did what does it actually mean then? We are looking at the definition of what does it mean to be a sheikh, and what is an understanding that we should have as to who the sheikh is. وأنواع الشيوخ. And the different types of sheikhs. والشروط التي ينبغي أن تتوفر في هذا الشيخ. As well as the conditions that should be found within an individual before we call them a sheikh. As well as the connection which is between the sheikh and the murid. In Atal Allah Azza wa Jalla fil Amar wa Aafana wa Yakum as Seha wa Al Afi and Al Kakum Badan Alahada. And if Allah wills that he extends our health and um, extends our life rather, inshallah we'll meet you and um, let this be our starting point inshallah tomorrow, same time. Um, if anybody has questions um, as to what was discussed today, um, the request is to send it through to um, our blessed admin who will just post the number um, in a few um, seconds or minutes. Everybody can just post um, through their questions on the number that is um, going to be posted by our blessed admin just now, inshallah. I'm not the blessed admin, just by the way, I'm the translator. Wasil Sadi. وإن شاء الله على حسب طلب الإخوان لديكم سيكون لدينا إن شاء الله دورتان قريبتان الدورة الأولى بمسمى المريد والإرادة ودورة تتحدث عن طريقة آل بعلوي. And based on requests that have already um, come through, we hope that um, once we finish this two-day session, there will be future sessions where we are speaking about um, the murid, um, the spiritual wayfarer, and um, uh, al-irada, 
um, this desire to to um, spiritual welfare, and um, th that will be one dora, and another dora on um, the tariqa of um, the Baalawi tariqa. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يوفقنا وإياكم لما فيه الخير ويجعلنا وإياكم ويصفقنا وإياكم ينظر إلينا ويسعدنا ويجعلنا من أهل الحقيقة والمتمسكين بالعروة الوثيقة يشرك في قلوبنا وإياكم الأنوار يرفعنا وإياكم إلى مراتب القرب من حضرته يجعلنا وإياكم من أهل التحلي والتخلي ويزغنا بفائضاته يجعلنا نسألك يا مولانا أن تقول لا والقائمين على هذه الدورة ومن سعى ومن خدم بلغ كل المطالب واجعلنا وياهم في على مراتب الرعاية والعناية سهل لنا التوفيق ابن عنا كل تعويق اللهم حقنا بحقائق الإيمان ورفعنا إلى مراتب الإحسان وذجنا في بحار العرفان يا حنان يا منان تب علينا توبة النصوحة اجعلنا من أهل الذين يتحقون بحقائق لا إله إلا الله وسر لا إله إلا الله وأنوار لا إله إلا الله وعلوم لا إله إلا الله وفيوضات لا إله إلا الله اللهم كما جمعتنا هذه الساعات مع هؤلاء الأحباب مع هؤلاء الإخوان على التذكر والتبصر فيما يقوم سلوكنا وسيرنا وإقبالنا أسألك أن تجمعنا في مقام القرب وأن تجمعنا على حوض حبيبك المصطفى ونبيك المرتضى وعلى حوضه وعلى تحت ظل عرشك في الفراديس العلاء اللهم إنا نسألك أن تمدنا بما مددت به أهل الإرادة وأعط كل واحد منا ومن هؤلاء الحضور مرادة وبارك في الكبار وفي الصغار وفي الرجال وفي النساء اجعلنا يا مولانا من أهل الاتباع وأهل الاقتداء وأهل النور اللهم نسأل أن تشر هدايات الإسلام وهدايات الإيمان وهدايات العرفان يا حي يا قيوم اللهم أرفع لا إله إلا الله في الشرق والغرب واجعلنا يا مولانا ممن يقومون بها ويخدمونها ويبذلون في سبيلها أزقنا حلاوة الذكر ونور الفكر اللهم حقنا بحقائق الصبر والشكر فعنا لأعلى المقامات وأعلى درجات اللهم ومن حضر ومن جاء ومن سعى ومن خدم وما قدم نسألك أن تبلغ الكل مرادة وأن تبلغ الكل مقاصدة نسألك أن تجعل هذه الدورة آثار وأخبار ونتائج وثمرات يظهر خيرها وسرها ونورها وبركتها وفيضها على الحاضرين وأبنائهم وبيوتهم اللهم ادفع الشر وادفع الظلام وادفع ظل الكفر اللهم أعلي لا إله إلا الله اللهم أعلي أنوار لا إله إلا الله اللهم أنشر أنوار لا إله إلا الله في الشرق والغرب واجعل كل واحد حاضر يا رب العالمين ناصرا لها خادما في سبيلها تنتشر على يديه هدايات النور وهدايات الدلالة والبلاغ والإرشاد يا حي يا قيوم اللهم نسألك أن تغفر لنا وأن ترحمنا وأن تنظر إلينا وأن ترضى عنا رضا يا مولانا رضاك الأكبر الذي لا سخط بعده ورضى عنا نبيك محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم نسلك أن تحقنا بحقائق العلم وأن تفتح علينا فتوح العارفين تجعلنا من العلماء الهداة المهتدين الصالحين المصلحين المتقين الأبرار الأخيار يا حي يا عزيز يا غفار اجمع القلوب على ما تحبه وترضى بلغ نبيك محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم ما يسر قلبه ويدخل السرور على فؤاده بهذه الدورة ومن حضر ومن سعى يا حي يا قيوم نسألك يا مولانا نظرة من نظراتك نفحة من نفحاتك خلعة من خلعك التي تخلعها على من قربتهم وعلى من أدنيتهم وعلى من صفيتهم وعلى من حققتهم بحقائق العبودية وأشركت فيهم أنوار الربوبية يا حي يا قيو نحن عبيد من عبادك فقراء ضعفاء لا نملك لأنفسنا ضرا ولا نفعا يا حي يا قيو نحن الضعفاء وأنت القوي ونحن الفقراء وأنت الغني يا غني يا قوي تفضل على عبادك هؤلاء الفقراء هؤلاء الضعاف الضعاف المساكين نرجو رحمتك نرجو نظرتك نرجو نفحتك نجرو يا مولانا خلعتك خلعة الإيمان حققنا بها لا تنزعها أبدا حتى نلقاك على أكمل الوجوه تحب لقاءنا ونحب لقاءك يا حي يا قيوم بسر أسرار الفاتحة إلى حضرة النبي حياكم الله بياكم نلقاكم إن شاء الله غدا على خير وفي خير إن شاء الله
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حبيبي جزاكم الله ألف نستودعكم الله الذي لا تضيع ودائعه Alhamdulillah, um, just a summary of um, what Habib um, mentioned um, in his dua, um, and it's um, uh, it's definitely not majority of it, but um, inshallah, um, even if one line um, gets on, so then it would be sufficient for us, alhamdulillah. Um, Habib men mentioned in his dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those people that have tawfiq, for Allah to gaze upon us, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to rid ourselves of our blameworthy qualities and to adorn ourselves with praiseworthy qualities and to make us of the people of la ilaha illallah in the true sense of the word and um, to bless the facilitators um, and as well as those in attendance of um, this gathering. And as he has united us today to also unite us on that day, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and through these gatherings for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make it a means of us attaining our goals and um, attaining um, th that these gatherings be a means of guidance for um, the, the, whole, the whole world and that we may attain from these gatherings the secrets of the religion and the fruits of these are uh, of the three pillars of the religion islam iman and ihsan and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us for our sins and then he concluded with um, reciting surah al-fatiha